What's up, y'all? It's Shanisha from Living Corporate. And you guys know for Real Talk Tuesdays, like, it's it's real talk. <laughs> so, uh, for this episode, I would say that for this episode, it can be a little bit difficult, right? When we think about layoffs and how they impact us um, emotionally, uh, mentally, physically, financially, right? It can really take a toll on us. And our guest today is really going to take a deep dive in the conversation to discuss layoffs and layoffs in tech, right? And just really give us some tools and resources, just good conversation surrounding layoffs. And, you know, we love our techs, guys and girls, <laughs> and we genuinely can understand and sympathize and empathize when we think about layoffs. So you guys tune in, listen up, Grab your snack, grab your water, because you know we like to keep you very well hydrated. <laughs> it's approaching summertime, so you guys tune in, tap into Real Talk Tuesdays. What's up, everyone? This is Shanisha from Living Corporate, and I'm so excited today. We have a wonderful guest and an awesome topic, right? So today we'll be discussing mass layoffs in tech. So this topic is, I mean, so relevant. I know many of you all in your own organizations have experienced mass layoffs or reorganizational structures that may take place. And we have a wonderful guest who has all the details to help us understand, educate us about mass layoffs in tech. So this guest is the owner and founder of Inclusive Excellence Consulting. She is a certified diversity executive who has worked in the diversity, equity, and inclusion in the international education sectors for over 14 years. She's certified, y'all. Navigating the workforce as a black dyslexic woman who is hard of hearing has allowed her to experience firsthand the importance of centering equity, cultures, and practices. She has dedicated much of her professional career to understanding the evolving challenges impacting different organizational cultures and has to best foster environments committed to equity and inclusive excellence. Her past professional roles include serving as Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the Chief Diversity Officer, Chief of Staff, Executive Director of, of Inclusive Ex- Excellence, Multicultural Student Services Director, Social Justice Committee Chair, International Education Advisor, and University Instructor. Her involvement in the community has been instrumental in her commitment to promoting DI, community engagement, and social justice locally and nationally. It is servant and leadership and her dedication to transforming the community through education, collaboration, and inclusion that motivates her. Please welcome Dr. Mary M.J. McConner. <laughs> Dr. McConner, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here this evening, so thank you for having me. Absolutely. How are you today? How are you feeling? You know... You know what? I'm doing pretty good. It's been a lot of a lot of positive momentum happening. So um, as you mentioned, I'm the owner of a full service diversity, equity and inclusion consulting firm. And so one of the things that just happened recently, I was selected as Memphis Business Journal Superwoman in Business. So it's it's me and 24 other yeah members of the class. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I've been. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. you. I've been on cloud nine. (laughs) You should be well-deserved, very much well-deserved, putting a lot of hard work for 14 years. I mean, definitely well-deserved. Absolutely. Could you share more about Inclusive Excellence Consulting? So uh, more about your business. How did it get started? Exactly. Who all do you help? Could you give us a little bit more details about that? Yeah, I can. And what I'll do, I'll tell you a little bit about how I got into uh, business ownership. So I actually, I started in higher education. So I used to work at colleges and universities for most of my career. Um, and some of those positions you named, that those were all higher ed positions. And I just reached a point where I was like, you know, I I really want to go the entrepreneurship route. I really want to do this. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and found my consulting firm in 2001. Now it was it was a leap of faith because I've, I'd never been an entrepreneur before, but I'd always had an entrepreneurial spirit. So I decided to go for it. And so, you know, I, 
I, I have no regrets. Like, I think it's the best decision I could have made. We work with everyone from Fortune 500 companies to uh, institutions of higher education. We work with professional associations. So the reason I love working as a consultant is because I get to work with so many different organizations now. Whereas when I was working at a university, I was just working for that one institution. And so now I feel like our work has a, a, a bigger reach. So yeah, I love what we do. Yeah. I love that. And I love how you include excellence, right? Because you're doing everything in excellence and you're expanding and reaching the masses. So that's that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. What is one evolving challenge that has impacted different organizational cultures? Yeah, I think the biggest one right now, and this has been a big hot topic, is, you know, there are a lot of folks out there questioning if diversity, equity, and inclusion um, should have as much I guess, I guess you could say prevalence within the work fa- work- workforce as it does. So we're at a point, uh, you're seeing certain governors and certain, certain states try to put legislation in place to say, okay, we don't want to have DEI taught in colleges and universities or taught within organizations. And so it's, it's, it's an interesting time because a lot of us recognize like you, you got to talk about it, right? We're one of the most diverse countries in the world. And if you look at Generation Z, there's the youngest generation that's in the workforce right now. That's one of the most multicultural generations in the world. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I'm a firm believer. We can, we can try to omit DEI initiatives and we could stop talking about it, but it's not going to change the fact that we've become increasingly diverse as a society. So we got to continue doing the work. Absolutely. I think continuing the work is extremely important. And so if we think back to, okay, when did DEI really become like a huge hot topic in these initiatives? You can go back to like George Floyd, right? And then so many organizations hopped on board and like they were full force, we're going to donate this amount of money. We're going to increase diversity by this percentage in our organizations. And after the pandemic, or as soon as we're coming towards the end of the pandemic, you can see some of those initiatives and everything kind of like slow down, decrease kind of whispers no one's really talking about it as much so I think continuing doing the work is extremely important and then I think for some of the organizations my next question to be with you is how how do we recover from the noise like everything's quieting down about the AI the government that you mentioned everyone's trying to take this out of universities trying to take it out of organizations like how do we continue the work or how do we recover from the work not being completed Yeah, you know what? I think that's a really good question. And this is what I've been telling organizations, because there's been a lot of talk about, you know, downsizing and cutting back budgets in order to cut costs. And I'm like, now is the time to get ahead of your competitors. Mm -hmm. And if you know that having a diverse workplace and having folks with different skill sets, different talents is going to set you apart from your competitors, now is the time to hop on it. Because a lot of folks are in the mindset of, oh, we got to we gotta get rid of this department. We have to downsize. We have to do layoffs here. We have to do it there. But I think this is an important time in our history too, because it's going to sh- it's gonna show which organizations are really committed to the work, which organizations care about their employees' well-being, care about um, you know, just serving diverse populations. So yeah, I, I think now is the time to to, to go full force, uh, especially mm-hmm. knowing that there are going to be a lot of corporations and companies out there that cut back on their DEI efforts. Mm-hmm. And I also wonder too, when the layoffs take place and they're making all these cuts, are they really looking at these departments that they're keeping and evaluating the diversity equity like is that something that they really even think about or is it more so we just want to cut down on cost we just cut these people and then later we can come back and like reevaluate that again if it's a priority yeah the the reality is a lot of times it's all about the money Mm -hmm. um and so sometimes organizations don't realize the impact that their decision is going to have until later Mm -hmm. Uh, and and it's interesting i got to tell you A lot of folks who work in diversity, equity, and inclusion, when we saw that there could be a potential economic downturn, we were like, "Uh uh-oh, we already know how these companies going to roll. We know which, (laughs) you know, which departments are going to be cut first. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the tech industry, there were tons of DEI professionals who were laid off. 
And we saw it coming because unfortunately, there's still a lot of companies that view uh, diversity and inclusion work as just like an add on instead of viewing it as something that needs to be a central part of an organizational culture. Like it, it's it needs to be embedded in it. Right. Just like accounting, just like marketing, finance, all those other key departments. You know, we have to get people to understand that this is just as important. Um, so, yeah, what we saw, we saw a lot of folks who work in diversity, equity and inclusion get laid off. And then we saw a lot of um, women and, and people of color get laid off, unfortunately. So it's just it's, it's an interesting time. And um, I think. I think it's going to have long-term impacts on most companies and they may not see it right away, but it is. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you mentioned the impact as well as they're having on um, people of color, women of color. Uh, Can you speak to the great strides that women of color have made over the years for representation in tech? Yes. Now I, even though we've seen some recent layoffs, what I will say is that, we have seen an increase in the number of girls and women in particular in STEM, especially um, black and brown girls, which has been great. Uh, I, as I mentioned, I come from higher education, so I got a chance to work firsthand with a lot of the department chairs and deans uh, in the STEM areas. And a lot of universities and, and a lot of just not universities and colleges, but there are a lot of organizations out there right now that have focused on preparing girls and women for STEM roles just because they saw that there was such a lack of representation there. One of the things that, um, you know, I do a lot of research and one of the things that I'm really proud of is just seeing the number of, um, pardon me, the number of girls, or I'm sorry, the number of women in STEM who have started their own companies. So it's a lot of, a lot of unicorns out there. um, And just, it's just, it's really empowering to see other female founders start their organizations and companies. I just went to a panel discussion last night and it was at least three young ladies who started their own apps. And so, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a lot of momentum around it right now. So even though we're seeing the layoffs, we're also seeing a lot of women decide to go the entrepreneurial route, which I'm all about. I'm in favor of that. So yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, giving them that push and that motivation. Cause I think most times, right. If we're staying within the organizations, we're comfortable. Right. And so you're pushed out there to really live out your dreams or live out what you want to be able to do for other other people like you. So I think that's amazing. So shout out to all of our girls starting their own own tech businesses and apps. So shout out to you. Absolutely. Um, we know that mass layoffs happen often. Right. I know you my organization. They may do it at the top of the year and it's like a huge impact. Right. There have been many of those layoffs that have happened in tech. So what makes mass layoffs in tech so unique? Yeah. So what makes it particularly unique is because there was already so few uh, women and especially black women and brown women and just people of color, period, in Mm -hmm. the tech industry. And so over the years, you saw, you know, some progress and it was slow and steady but then when you have a major layoff like this happen and you some of the first people to go are your um employees with historically minoritized identities mm-hmm. it's like you just set yourself back <laughs> you know like back what 30 40 maybe mm-hmm. even 50 years right it's like all the progress that was happening mm-hmm. it just it's like okay we're back at square one and so that's why it's particularly hard to see the tech industry be hit so hard mm-hmm. um and there's been some you know some pros with it a lot of people have decided to go the entrepreneurial route and it is it's helped put them in a position to where they could become founders of their own companies but still we still need to have representation in those organizations how how could organizations increase their representation? Well, I, I think the first thing is uh, y'all need to start hiring some of those DEI professionals <laughs> back in the organization. Um, and, you know, I acknowledge my bias because I work in the space. So, of course, mm-hmm. I feel like, yes, the work is important. But um, all jokes aside, uh, a lot of us, you know, we have certain insights on you know, trends, we're looking at data, we're looking at, hey, you know, these are the numbers, this is the impact that it has on your organization when you have folks of different 
backgrounds and lived experiences working in your company. Um, and so, you know, we, we, we study that, we, we teach about it. And so it's just really important, I think, to have DEI departments or, uh, you know, and, and I, I acknowledge not every tech company laid off their DEI department, but mm-hmm. it, based on what I'm hearing, still a lot of cutbacks and budget cuts. So make sure those departments are funded and supported as well. So I think that's a good start is to have folks in there who can advocate for increasing diversity within the organization and advocate for how to do it in a way that's effective. Absolutely. Cause we definitely want to make sure that we see some impact in that. So I know that uh, you just mentioned about or spoke to about the uniqueness of it, but how does mass layoffs and tech impact the industry overall? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, you know, mass layoffs are always going to be, hard. Um, they're always going to be hard, not just on the organizations because they're losing a lot of employees, but also on individuals as well. Mm-hmm. And so for a lot of folks, they might find this time to be kind of discouraging if they have been laid off by their company. Um, and one of the things companies have to recognize too is for folks who've been laid off, there is a psychological safety component to it, right? So you feel like, oh, I I can't trust any of these companies and you're going to have some folks who may not want to come back. And you have to think about the morale for people who are still in the organization, who've just seen like hundreds of folks get laid off within their company. Some of these folks are their friends. They've come to their weddings, baby showers. It's like, dang, you know, that was my homie. They they, they laid off the whole department and I used to hang out with them. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just so many different things that, you have to consider um, as an industry when you do mass layoffs and the effect that it's going to have on not just people who've been laid off, but also the folks who are still within your organization. So there's a lot of trust um, repair that needs to happen a lot of times. Yeah, I know that you mentioned about the psychological impact that it can have on those who have been laid off and those who are actually still there and have just witnessed the layoff. But how does one like prepare for a layoff uh, or even bounce back from a layoff. Yeah, I would say the biggest thing with the layoffs right now, especially in the tech industry, is we know that tech is here to stay. Um, and even though we've seen an economic downturn uh, right now, like it's it's current, um, it, those jobs, like we'll see other job openings elsewhere. Like you'll see other opportunities open up because we are such a digital society. Like I'm looking at us, like we're on this, you know, video conference and we're able to talk to each other and see each other because of technology. Um, I was just reading something this morning about all this stuff happening with AI. I don't know if y'all have seen these like dope pictures. (laughs) They look so real, right? (laughs) And it's like, whoa. And you just look at how much we've advanced over the years because of technology. Um, And so that's why I say technology will always be here to stay. And I know it can be devastating in the moment when you lose your job, uh, but there's there's other opportunities out there. And maybe for some folks, this might be the chance to go ahead and and take a leap of faith and start their own tech company. So I'm Mm -hmm. I'm all for it. I think just, you know, follow your heart, which whatever you think is right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to add on to that. Do you think that uh, many of us, uh, even those especially in tech, may make the mistake of being so loyal and faithful to their company that when layoffs do happen, they miss the opportunity where they may have have networked with other organizations and companies to be able to make that transition? Um, I think most times when we're in an organization, it's like, okay, you know, we're here, want to stay here. Well, the millennials, maybe <laughs> we're here. We want to stay here. You know, we want to retire here. So you you never really venture out and look at other organizations and the opportunities that they may offer. So when the mass layoff happens, you haven't updated your resume. Uh, you haven't updated your profile online from LinkedIn. So now you have to start all over again. And it could be, like you said, a little discouraging or even overwhelming if you've been in an organization for X number of years because you haven't really prepared yourself or kept current with what's happening in other organizations or just even with your yourself? Yeah, that's a good question. And, uh, you know, the the first phrase that came to mind was stay ready so you don't have to get ready. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. but, but um, no, it's, it, it's, you're absolutely right. And I'll admit, like I did that over the years, I used to be super loyal to companies. And I think we all have done that at a certain point, especially if we 
we really like that organization. Um, but just based on what we've seen, we now know it's just a good learning lesson where you say, all right, we know these companies, you know, they, they, they think about profit first a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And as soon as something happens, they're going to look at how they can save money. And so in order to protect myself, I have to always be ready and always networking and connecting with folks in the event that I need to find another opportunity. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a reality that I think we all have to come to grips with. And as tough as it can be, even if you really like an organization, I am a firm believer always, you know, always stay prepared just in case because you never know. And, and to follow up on that, what are some possible like easy entry ways for those that may have been laid off, may not have enough experience in tech, or they were just getting started in tech and they were laid off? What are maybe some other easy entry ways into tech that they could possibly transition into? Yeah, I think one of the things if in most cities have them, you have like chambers, uh, chambers of commerce, and you have different organizations that help with like employment and they help you get connected with different businesses in the community. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and actually I found that when I was taking like a sabbatical between finishing up my job in higher ed and starting my company that I had time to go out and get connected with different people. And I found that to be like one of the, the most, impactful times in my career because I could finally connect with people and see what opportunities were actually out there. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think, I think that's a great way to get connected and to, to connect with potential businesses and and people within the industry. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's that's good. That's good. So, Hey, you guys are getting a lot of good insight to help you um, during this period of time, which it can be really difficult to experience a layoff and it does have psychological impact psychological impact emotional impact and you're trying to just figure out your your next move of what you can do because there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that are happening within our country as a whole uh so i, I definitely think listening in uh, to dr mcconnor and reaching out to her to get information and also contacting her through her consulting business right she's operating in full excellence i think that's a, a great way to be able to kind of navigate this space so are there any final thoughts that you would like to share anything maybe that have you have not touched on that you definitely want to make sure that the audience understands or gets to know more about you yeah one one thing i want to uh end with is just because i because like i said i know how hard this can be for a lot of folks But just know that if you did experience a layoff, like if you were a part of that, just know it's no reflection of you or your work ethic. At the end of the day, like I said, uh, a lot of companies, they're looking at it purely from a finance standpoint. They're looking at it from how can we save money during this time? And so it's easy to internalize because I I know I went through that uh, when I went through some job transitions uh, a while back and I was just like, oh, is it me? Do I need to work harder? What did I do wrong? But just know that it's no reflection of you and what you're capable of. And so you, you just have to remind yourself that you have the skill set, you have the expertise to get back out there. Um, and, and whether you choose to work for another company or go the entrepreneurial path, just keep that in mind and know that you you are excellent. Absolutely, because you are, because we're operating in excellence over here, right? That's right, we operate in excellence. That's my that's my key phrase, excellence. Absolutely. We operate in excellence. Mm-hmm. So any, any shout outs? Yeah, you know what? I want to give my team a shout out. Um, I work with some really great consultants. And um, yeah, so if you want to learn more about Inclusive Excellence Consulting, you can visit our website at www.ieconsultingfirm.com. We're also on LinkedIn. Uh, you can look up inclusive excellence dot, or inclusive excellence consulting on there. We also have Instagram. We have Facebook. Our uh, Instagram is the same. It's our full name, so we got a long name, but it's all there. And um, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to everyone who who is you know continuing to figure out where they want to be within the workforce and mm-hmm. where they want to be in terms of their own entrepreneurial journey if they choose to go that route so just we we're all in this together Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So please do not hesitate to reach out to Dr. McConnor. I think, you know, the impact that she's having in the industry as a whole and her, I mean, well of knowledge over 14 years. I mean, you can't beat that. You can't get any more certified than that. Right. 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't been working my whole life. <laughs> so, she knows. She knows you're in your <laughs> hands, right? And that's our show. Thank you for joining us on Living Corporate Podcast. Be sure to follow Dr. McConnor. Do you have your Instagram and you, you plug your LinkedIn, but anything for social media outside of LinkedIn that they may follow you on? Yeah, so my Instagram is MJ McConnor. My uh, nickname is MJ. And then also I'm on Facebook. Feel free to follow me on there. And then I love me some LinkedIn. That's actually my favorite platform. So just look me up by my first and last name, Mary McConnor. See, you may, you may get a faster response on LinkedIn. So you guys should have your LinkedIn up to up and ready anyway <laughs> as you're looking to continue to navigate in the tech space. So that'll be an awesome platform to reach out to her on. So make sure you follow us on Instagram at Living Corporate, our Twitter page at Living Corp underscore pod and subscribe to our newsletter through our Living Corporate website. Dr. McConnor, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Your, your knowledge base, I mean, is phenomenal. And I'm so excited to see what the future has for you. Congratulations again uh, for being nominated in your award today. So that's amazing. That's awesome. And you enjoy your day. And guys, thank you for tuning in to Living Corporate. This is Shanisha and Dr. MJ McConnor. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for tapping in and tuning in to Real Talk Tuesdays. This episode was amazing. Okay. Nothing short of amazing. Just some real conversation, real talk when we think about layoffs. And for all of those that may have experienced layoffs and layoffs in general, and then layoffs in text for my beautiful black and brown people, we support you. We empathize with you. Make sure that you tune into some of those resources, get the support and help that you need. Hey, we're going to continue to advance forward. There's greater things that lie ahead. So this is Shanisha. Thank you for tuning in to Live in Corporate. Living Corporate is a podcast by Living Corporate LLC. Our logo was designed by David Dawkins. Our theme music was produced by Ken Brown. Additional music production by Antoine Franklin for Musical Elevation. Post-production is handled by Jeremy Jackson. Got a topic suggestion? Email us at livingcorporatepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and living-corporate.com. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned.